Hey guys, it's Mike with Marine Breeders Vlog number five. Well, there he is. The lone survivor out of that black and white batch from last week. One fish through meta. Uh, disappointing to say the least. Um, we need to try to figure out what this problem is. So, for a while now, We've been using this two-foot double T5 strip light that was mounted up high as our lighting for our two larval tubs. Um, as you can see, I've changed that. I'm going to try something new. Uh, I picked up these uh, nice LED lights for $17, actually $16.99 at Lowe's yesterday. They're stainless steel and they've got quite a few LEDs and they seem to put out to me looks to be about uh, 5000K uh, light but the best part is that they can clip right onto the side. They have a little switch on the cord. I've got them plugged into our timer. I'm anxious to try one of these um, and see if this will help illuminate uh, the tub properly. I, always before you couldn't see down in the tub. So um, what I'm going to do today is this one right here is ready to be cleaned out and I'm going to show you how we go about setting up for hatching a new nest. So guys first things first we're going to have to get all the stuff out of this tub and we're going to have to siphon all this water out scrub the tub down and then we're going to refill with fresh seawater. I've been doing a two-thirds to one-third ratio mix. Uh, one-third broodstock to two-thirds uh, fresh NSW. And I'll show you how we go about that. So the first thing we're going to do is get our airline out of here. And the next thing we want to do is get this heater unplugged. And we'll pull this filter off. Uh, these are just a sponge filter that come off of a high door um, air, air based filter and you just take the sponges and they slip over a one inch pipe perfectly so it works real well for the baby fish and I've tried different screening but I found these to be the quickest and easiest because it's real easy to slip a clean one on and pull the dirty one off so that's one thing that we're using. <clears throat> Got to shut the water off to the tub. We have two uh, gate valves over here. Now I'm going to take and clean the heater. The way I've been doing it is, I have a heater clip that I rubber band at an angle and it keeps the heater up off the bottom. Uh, I found that I was losing a lot of fish by just laying the heater on the bottom.
So now I'm going to take my algae pad and I'm going to thoroughly rub down and scrape the sides to get any debris off of it. <clears throat> get bacterial films, everything. You want to make it as clean as possible. Uh, some would say to sterilize it. I know there are a few out there that even sterilize their water and I tried some of that. And sterilizing the water for me really didn't make a difference. Uh, it's something I might revisit if I try to raise something other than clownfish in the near future. Um, I don't think that it's necessary. So now we've rubbed down everything. <clears throat> In my fish room, I've got drains that run down along the walls. So although not the entire fish room, can I siphon directly into a drain, not having to do buckets? Uh, a majority of it, I can. A majority of the big systems. In fact, I think the, uh, the grow out system uh, is the only one that I can't do that with. The tub's pretty empty. Uh, there's a little bit of water in it, um, not much. Less than half an inch of water in the bottom. So now it's time to go ahead and bracket everything back into place. All right, here we go. Now we're going to uh, fill this up about a third of our uh, 12 gallons with uh, water out of the brood stock. And that's good enough. All right, so there's our broodstock water. Now we need to add our fresh mix. I use mine in a salinity of 1.021. to All right, guys, this is the nest we're going to pull. As you can see, this is my large black and white pair. Uh, they usually lay a pretty decent nest. Um, I notice they're always somewhat sporadic. You can see uh, it's not nearly as tight of a nest that uh, a regular orange oscillaris, but uh, quite a few, quite a few eggs there, all silvery, looking at us, ready to hatch here in a couple hours. So, what we're going to do is the temperature is now 80 degrees, and you can see the amount of airflow that I have going here. I'll probably turn this down just a little bit more. Um, when I hatch from a pot, those are actually six inch pots instead of four. Uh, I had to do that because uh, the female was so big that she couldn't comfortably lay in a four inch pot. So. I haven't tried uh, tiles with her yet. I'd need to buy some bigger tiles than what I've got on hand. But I may try that in the near future and see how things go. So what I do is I made myself, I took a piece of rigid airline tubing and I heated it up and I bent it at a right angle. And I've got an aquatic ecosystem, one of their non-clogging air stones. And I have it turned up pretty good. Um, I've tried over time with different amounts of air. You can kind of gauge a little bit. Um, I may turn this down just a little, but I found that it actually needs to be pretty vigorous. If it doesn't, uh, they don't seem to hatch properly. Uh, I usually get a full hatching with uh, aeration that's this vigorous. So, now that everything's in place, the water's up the temp, it's circulated. Uh, now we're going to pull the pot. Hey guys, so yeah, yesterday I showed you how we set things up for a hatch. I should have been showing you today a tub full of larvae. I don't know if you can even see any of them. There's a handful. 
for some reason, once again, and I've had this happen about 20 to 30 percent of the time, they don't hatch when they're supposed to. As you can see, about 80 percent of the nest is still there. So, what that means is we're going to try again tonight. Uh, I don't know if these ones that hatched last night will make it. I did put some rotifers in with them, but disappointing. Um, it only seems to happen that way with the black and whites. So, I don't know. If anybody uh, has any solutions to this, please uh, write something in the comments. Not sure if you guys can see or not. Um, getting a lot of reflection here. But we have success. Uh, took two days to get them all to hatch. But I now have a tub full of larvae. So that's how we go about getting them to hatch. Hey guys, so I hope you enjoyed this week's vlog. Showed you a little bit about what we go through to hatch a batch of eggs. Um, as you can see, with especially with the black and whites, we've had our share of issues. Um, I don't know if that's just common to, ha to have multiple day hatchings or what. Uh, if you guys would, please subscribe. Uh, give us a thumbs up if you like this video. Uh, I'm slowly but surely learning more editing techniques and I'm looking at different editing software and trying them out so that hopefully we can make uh, some better content. Although this is really just supposed to be a vlog type style um, show. I'm not trying to make anything uh, that's like a professional show. Uh, I'm going to be at MBI Workshop this weekend. If you're going to be there, please come up, say hi. Uh, always looking to talk to people about uh, marine fish breeding and share ideas and things that we can do to better improve how we go about doing things. And maybe there's something that, you know, information we can share with someone else. So I hope you guys have a good week. Uh, sorry this video is a little late. Um, I also, sorry about some of the camera stuff. My son wanted to help me film, so I let him help me. Uh, it, sometimes it's really hard to film things uh, when you're by yourself so anyways uh, guys have a good week and hopefully next week I will have a vlog coming from the MBI workshop so talk to you later